I'm the head of education here at Johnson & Johnson Institute, and our responsibility is to train surgeons all around the world. Today, we have a real problem that on a global basis, there's not enough access to safe healthcare because we don't have enough surgeons trained. VR tools like Oculus can help us solve this global crisis. With Oculus and VR, it's allowed us to really shrink the time in which we can put somebody into an experience. We can now immerse them into hundreds of different uh, actual life scenarios. So from day one, they're providing much more empathy to our customer. And so at the end of the day, it's allowing us to provide a better experience. At DHL Express, we ship around 5 million shipments a week. And to do that, we have to build what we call unit load devices. And this is where VR is invaluable. We can send people into an immersive world and they can be safe and they can go through the process of building this unit load device. And that's where VR really works for us as a business. So the potential for AR VR in our company comes back to our core business, which is meeting the world's energy needs with highly complex operations. Fundamentally, the most important commitment ExxonMobil has is to operate our facilities safely and reliably around the world. This technology helps us ensure we deliver on that commitment. In our industry, our operators are exposed to daily tasks that are extremely high risk. With VR, we can get them prepared and trained for those tasks. If that helps us save lives, it's paid for itself. So at Tailspin, the whole point of starting the company was to take advantage of what's possible in VR and how that was gonna change the workforce. For us, Oculus is part of our origin story. We were lucky enough to collaborate with Tailspin and really be the first in insurance that we're aware of to use this kind of technology. The biggest barrier to proper use of simulation within healthcare is not one of realism and fidelity, it's one of access. It is an incredibly powerful technology that will affect us from Los Angeles to New York to Western Africa to Southeast Asia. I actually think Oculus and virtual reality is going to be the way that we train many, many parts of our healthcare systems around the world. Oculus enables DHL Express to scale up any implementation around the world that we've never been able to do before. Standalone headset, because the total cost of ownership is less, allows us to touch a lot more people. We can move it around, we can get to more people, and in the end, impact a lot more of our employee workforce using this technology and the power of it. And it's critical that we have partners like Oculus to create that wonderful platform where we can then deliver our virtual reality content to anybody, anywhere, and at any time. Sumner High School opened in 1875 as the first high school west of the Mississippi River for African Americans. With vital black institutions such as Homer G. Phillips, St. Louis's only hospital that trained and cared for black people, and Sumner High School, the Ville emerged as an economically thriving black middle class community where excellent health care and education was accomplished for and by black people. Many possible solutions on how to revitalize the beautiful place that was once the Ville. However, there are three solutions in particular that I deem doable. The first possible solution is to take actions to create a clean environment. Cleaning up the environment can help economic revitalization. The Ville emerged as an economic Down syndrome are aborted in the United States alone. I love going to school. 
Everyone is so nice and always play with me. One of my favorite games to play is Don't Touch Limb or Run Away From Limb. They even decided to make my name as a game title. How special am I? Today we are covering the social determinants of health for immigrants. Through an interactive flowchart. Here's how to log on to our flowchart. Pull out your camera and scan the QR code. You will then be given a question which you either answer yes or no. Once you choose an answer, you will be presented with a statistic, story, or a solution. It's Labaka and Emily, here with your afternoon news. Today, our topic of discussion is housing disparities in the Black community. Joining us on today's segment is the critically acclaimed Denai Shanks, bringing us the statistics on this pressing issue. According to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, this can be attributed to the fact that people of color are often shown fewer rental units, offered higher rents, and are denied more leases. There's a history behind this treatment dating all the way back to the Great Migration. The Great Migration was the movement of African Americans from the rural south to northern and midwestern cities. Between 1916 and 1970, the goal was to escape segregation and find work. We are the Zamani Project and we created a website. Our mission is to uh, create awareness on the discrimination in a car of the incarceration in black communities. The Zamani Project is a four-part solution. On our website, you can see there's one 15-minute clip that shows the injustices in a real-life discussion between all of us. But though, like, if, honestly, if people it's wanted always, to know... It's so looked over. I mean, people don't realize how much discrimination is happening because it's right, they try so to downplay. Yeah, 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 because it's yeah. been happening for so long. They try and downplay with, like what's going yeah. on. I feel like they're trying to use it. That's the problem. Yep. Do y'all know how many stories don't get posted right. on the news, none of that, because right. they're used to it now. Then we have statistics to prove that the problem is actually happening. We have two stories to corroborate and back up what we are saying. And finally, a solution to tie it all together.